The world of tennis can be a really mean, condescending place, especially if you happen to play a certain style of tennis, known as being a pusher or a defensive player, whatever you want to call it. Over the last couple of videos, I've been featuring these two players and doing a technique and strategy breakdown. And over those last couple of videos, we've received over a thousand comments, and most of them have been super, super positive. But I want to talk about a few themes in the negativity that are really important to understand. Because if you don't understand them, you might have the wrong perception about other fellow tennis players, or even the wrong perception about yourself. So let's dive right into some of those comments, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. The first theme we're gonna talk about is the whole idea of those analysis breakdowns being low-level players. And there actually was very little of this beneath the, the comments of those three videos, which kind of shocked me. And that's because I think I included some statistics and some, some background. But let's go a little bit deeper into this. Um, this specific comment, can we stop making videos for low-level tennis? Pushers only exist when your balls don't have enough speed or your overall technique is bad. We're gonna talk more about that. An analysis of a higher level match will provide a lot more important lessons that will help many more players. So let's, let's talk about that. First of all, let's talk about the actual defensive player in that match. Below the original video, the highlights video, Tennis Troll Channel said this about the player that he was playing. Uh, Self-taught player in green shirt is 7-4 in, in singles competition in USDA 4-5 and NTRP 4-5 league for 2019 and 2-0 in the 2020 season in Atlanta. In case you don't know, Atlanta is one of the strongest areas for tennis, the, the Alta League. Every community has their own team. It's just an incredible community of tennis players all around the Atlanta area. Some of the strongest competition in, in the United States. I uh, played USDA 4-5 league in both Atlanta and Virginia. Also reached a uh, final of a 300 points NCRP 4-5. Yada, yada, yada. Like he beat the number one, number three seed in, in tournament and 4-5 tournament. This guy beats lots of 4-5 players. And when you look at the level breakdown, I just kind of flashed this up briefly in a, a previous video. This is 2017 in purple and 2018 in green. This was a graph I found just showing the shift of players from level to level from year to year. And you can see here that four or five players make up about 9% of tennis players here in the United States and 5-0 less than 2%. So if you're a four or five player, if you're winning at four or five, you're in the top 10% of amateur tennis players, meaning players who don't make a living playing tennis. So the whole idea that by focusing on higher level players, I'd help many more players. The focus on a four or five match is helping 95% of all tennis players everywhere. The focus of this channel has always been on passionate amateur players and will continue to be on passionate amateur players. What I think is really going on here beneath the surface, I made a very brief comment about this in part three of this series, is the difference between feel and real. We all feel like we're a certain level of player when we play tennis, but the reality is usually different than that. I know that, I've seen myself on video hundreds of times hitting a tennis ball. Most people watching YouTube videos have never seen themselves hit a tennis ball, but it feels like a certain amount of power, a certain amount of spin, a certain amount of competency, and a certain level of play. It's only once you see yourself play that you know the truth, but unfortunately, most keyboard warriors who go around the internet trolling other players don't actually know what they look like themselves. So the picture in their head and the picture on their phone while they're typing in their, their comment, it's two completely different things to them, but in reality, it's probably the same level that they're playing themselves. So kudos to all of you, all the incredible positive feedback over the last uh, couple of videos. But I wanted to just draw a little bit of attention to this kind of level inequality, because I think it's so important for all of us to realize that this does happen. And the more we can all be on the same page, the more supportive of a community we can be. Speaking of positivity, if this is already resonating with you, do me a favor, click that like button. Helps the video, helps more tennis players see it, which this video I, I really believe needs to be seen by, by everybody who plays tennis. So this second theme, it's not real tennis, 
or other kind of thoughts or comments like that. You've probably heard this a ton revolving around the topic of pushers. Uh, this YouTube viewer, we disrespect them because it's not tennis what they play. The rules are tennis, points are counted like in tennis, the court is the same, equipment as well, yet the game you play is not tennis. They just ruin the fun of playing the game regardless of the actual outcome. Sure, if you're the type of guy who plays to win and only for that, you can change your mindset. Otherwise, just avoid these morons. When I meet such a player, I have no feelings any longer. Yikes. I just let them win or try to serve in volley and I drink a beer. <laughs> so we need, we, we've got to talk about it, that it's, it's not tennis. It's the exact opposite. What do you need to play tennis? You know, courts, you need a racket, you need a ball. And as long as there's two people playing on a court with a racket and a ball, that is tennis, regardless of the style that's played or the type of technique that's used or whether they're in a wheelchair or whether they're on their feet, they're, they're playing tennis, whether it's two players, whether there's four players. I know it, may, it sounds like maybe I'm making obvious statements here, but it's very objective. Like it's either tennis or it's not. What's subjective, what can be opinion, is based on style. But here's the thing, if you dislike a particular style, it doesn't make you feel good, and it's not fun for you to play that style, then that's totally fine. Just don't play that type of style of player. It's, it's totally fine. As long as you take responsibility for the fact that it's your opinion. This is not some kind of rule or law that somebody who plays defense is some like sub-class of tennis players, sub-class like, of, of human. That's, that's honestly kind of a scary uh, thought, but I see it all the time in the comments on YouTube. And besides, there's lots of professional players that grew up playing unconventional styles. Let's look at a quick example of that. This is Fabrice Santoro playing against Roger Federer in 2012. Watch him hit a couple of shots and see if it kind of feels a little familiar. Uh, maybe a little bit of a flashback compared to the other stuff that we've been watching. Those, by the way, are right-handed, two-handed, four-hand slices where he's letting go with his right hand and hitting with his left hand. So something that you've probably never seen on a tennis court before. He had 40 wins against top 10 players. Here he is playing against Andre Agassi. Won over, uh, what was it? It was 10 million. Uh, 10 million dollars in prize money as a professional tennis player and won 470 professional matches. Is it like pretty to watch? For many tennis fans, no, they're not really gonna appreciate that or enjoy it. They have a different aesthetic that they enjoy. Did they ban him from playing professional tennis because he did things differently and he just got a lot of balls back in play? Now to be clear, he had weapons too. He could hit the ball hard. Totally different class of athlete than me or just about anybody else that's gonna watch this video. But he had very different ways of playing the game. And that made it all the way up to the professional level. So bottom line here for me, you feel free, have your feelings, have your, your personal um, likes and dislikes, you can have your opinions, but it doesn't make your opponent any lesser of a player. It just means they play differently than you do. We all have different approaches and different styles. If you don't like a certain style, it's not their fault. It's just the way that they've learned how to play the game and they're probably working hard to improve just like you are. Quick update on our subscriber challenge. Back on August 1st, I put out the challenge that if we got to 215,000 subscribers by the end of the month, then I would release free access to course of our choice, of your choice rather, viewer's choice, up to $400. All you gotta do is tap the subscribe button. And the day I'm recording this, August 10th, we're up to 208,000 and a little bit of change. Made a really nice jump from August 4th. And it was all because of the last update the last time I did one of these updates, I said, listen, we're kind of like on the edge here. We had a huge day. This was our previous record over here of subscriptions in a day. It was about 420 or something like that. And we more than doubled it the last time I did an update. And since then, we've been pretty much on track. So as of right now, if we keep things moving, we're in a good position and we'll reach that goal. All we want to do is provide more resources for you and more tennis players out there. That's why we're doing this challenge. Thank you for supporting us by tapping that subscribe button. The third big theme that I saw revolved around this idea of me endorsing or condoning bad technique. This is a perfect example of that. Completely disagree. You're basically saying it's okay to have horrible technique as long as you get the ball back 
you can do it however you want. Well, actually, it's not me saying that. That's the rules of tennis. Inside the rules of tennis, there's no, there's no section on technique that says, when you look horrible, you forfeit the point. Or when you have janky technique, you default the match. Just walk back to your car. That's, that's not me. That's the rules of tennis. There, there is no rule about having horrible technique. Just had to stop and get that out of the way right away. That's not only dumb, OK, well, then you dislike the rules of tennis. But anyone who takes that advice is going to hit a wall where they can't get any better because of bad habits. We're going to talk about that. It's important. If people are roasting the guys because of a very clear reason, any coach I've ever had would have taken my racket away if I had a ball toss that was less than a foot above my head or swapped hands to try to reach a ball I didn't move quickly enough for. It's literally hard to watch this guy play. And you're over here holding him up as a shining example. Yeah, I kind of am. Uh, the fact that he's got technical flaws but still wins at a higher level than you probably play, Jason, that is incredible. Like To me, that's inspiring. The fact that somebody can take their skills that they learned as an adult that don't necessarily look pretty, but they can figure out how to play the game effectively, I, I am holding them up as an example. I think it's a, a really good lesson that we need to learn. So why do people play tennis? Like You seem to think that it's all about figuring out how to hit the, the ball as good as possible. And if you have horrible technique, then you don't b belong on the court. Like it, That's not the reason why you showed up that day is to just like try to win. This is a general like theme was people are like, well, if you only want to win, well, some people do just want to win and that's all they care about. I went to our, our Facebook group that has over 10,000 players, incredible community of players, super passionate players, the most driven and dedicated players you're, you're going to find anywhere. And two days ago, I went in and simply asked, why do you play tennis? Just left it at that. Had over 250 replies and I went through and tallied all the different reasons that, that people gave. And they fell within these categories. Self-growth, and like I, I want to learn how to become a, a better person, how to fight harder, how to learn how to mentally focus. Exercise, wanted to spend more time with loved ones. Just simple love of the game. I just love the game of tennis. I, I'm not sure what it is, but I just have to be around it. Social, be around other people. Competition, like I want to try to win. I love that challenge. We had two people out of 250 say that they play tennis because they want to try to master the technical side of the game. And we had one person say because of money. Not sure if he's a coach or I don't think he's a professional player. But, but anyway, obviously, the, mo the most common ones were love of the game, exercise, self-growth, competition, social so on and so forth. By the way, lots of people, if you're adding these up, people said multiple things. So we just kind of add a, added a little tally mark. Most people are not playing the game of tennis because they have some obsession over doing it the right way. There are people out there like that. And I see them in the comments on YouTube. I read all of your comments. There are those people out there. And I, those of you watching who were super positive and supportive of that defensive player, I want you to know that this is a small minority. And you're going to hear from those people from time to time. And they're going to try to drag you down and say that you're a lesser of a player because you have a pancake serve or because you have a certain style of play. But they're a small minority. You're in good company. If you're playing tennis for this reason, you love the game, you love the exercise, you love the competition, you love to challenge yourself and, and try to get better at a skill like tennis, if that's the reason why you play, that's why most people are playing tennis. So don't let a couple of naysayers really drag you down. The other big part of that comment was the whole idea of condoning horrible technique. Well, here's the thing. We all have horrible technique compared to somebody who's multiple levels in front of us. My technique is horrible compared to Roger Federer. Or frankly, anybody that you see on TV, my technique is absolutely terrible. And if I went out and played Federer, guess what I would be? I'd be a pusher. Because I can't hit a shot consistently that can challenge Roger Federer. And so I would become a defensive player. I could you know, maybe get lucky here and there and just like flail at a ball and, and hit a shot that maybe was a winning shot. But 
99% of the time, I would be on the defense. I'd be trying to just survive. I'd be trying to just like get the ball back in the court however I can. And so the difference is Federer would win. He would, he would like double golden set me and like double bagel me, unlike most amateur players who play against somebody who has worse technique at 3-0, 3-5, 4-0, 4-5. There's a lot of worse technique or horrible technique players that win a lot of matches. And they kind of hang out at those levels and just win, you know, week after week, month after month, year after year. And the players who lose to them have to try to come up with some kind of reasoning why this is happening. And that's why they end up blaming the style. They end up blaming the person even, the pusher for the loss. When in reality, they just haven't developed the skills that they need to figure out how to beat that, that weaker player. So am I condoning horrible technique? Yeah. What's the alternative? Like, you got to pass some strokes test, and if you don't pass the test, you can't play tennis? No, that, that's absolutely ridiculous. But it seems to be what some people expect, that if you can't cut a certain level of stroke efficiency and proficiency or prettiness, then you're not playing tennis, and you might as well just stay home. And that's a horrible attitude. And I'm here to tell you, if you're watching right now, no matter what anybody else tells you, if you're out there busting your butt, trying your best, doing the best you can with the skills that you have, that's all you need to be concerned about. And that's all you need to have an incredible experience as a tennis player, no matter what anybody else says. So it sounds like I'm really pushing hard for the pusher, right? So why not just be, if we can't beat him, why not just join him? Why not just become a pusher? And a lot of, several people ask me this, why not become a pusher ourselves? I mean, almost every player struggles with pushers, and honestly, I'm not going to be a pro. Well, here's the thing, going back to that that chart really quick, when I ask like, why do you play? You need to figure out like, what, what is it that moves the needle for you? If all you care about is winning, if you fall into this category and you just love competition and all the rest of this, like totally take it or leave it, then I don't, I don't have a problem with that. If you wanna shift styles and be a defensive style player because all you care about is your win loss, I'm not gonna tell you you're doing it wrong. Some people are going to. I'm definitely not going to be one of those people. I want you to learn, like, how do you get the most satisfaction and happiness and fulfillment out of the game of tennis? And then go pursue that. Like, make that your focus. And it could be any of these things. Now, for me, as a coach who, like, I have a passion helping people overcome their, their bad habits, you see me working on my own game. I get satisfaction from that. I get satisfaction seeing a before and after image of my previous backhand and my new backhand that I just worked on and I just improved. I get a lot of satisfaction out of that. So I pursue that. And the people who fly here from all around the world to work with me, they get a lot of satisfaction from that too. So we, we make a great team. Somebody who wants to fix their backhand, they don't show up here and I don't tell them, ah, your backhand's fine. Let's work on your strategy. Or when somebody comes here to work with me on their strategy, I don't say, Okay, we can work on your strategy, but first we're gonna spend three hours changing your grip on your serve and on your forehand. I'm all about allowing people to choose what they wanna channel their energy into and then let them pursue that. And I'll, I'll arm them with the knowledge and the process that they need to reach those goals. Anybody who tells you that you're not allowed to do that probably has some kind of internal you know, struggle or internal conflict that they're trying to work out themselves. And you just ha kind of have to smile and continue forward. And so my goal with this video is to kind of give you a little bit of perspective, maybe open your mind up a little bit to different ways of thinking and directly address the negativity out there. Although it's a really small percentage, five, 10 years ago when I started doing YouTube, it was a much bigger percentage. And to all of you out there watching right now, I wanna say thank you for all the incredible support, the positivity, the positivity for the, the players that I've been featuring recently. It means so much to me and so much to them. So if this little review of the feedback in the comments has been helpful, do me a favor and click that like button. Feel free to leave a comment down below. I read every single one and I'll see you in the next video.